A lot of people have heard of the fishbone diagram. Maybe you have even used one before, or you're looking to get more out of this powerful tool. The fishbone diagram is a structured analysis tool used to organize potential causes with a specific effect. This is where the name cause and effect diagram came from. The tool was developed by Dr. Karu Ishikawa in the 1960s. While it does resemble a fish, this quality tool is much more than just a sea creature. To understand the diagram a little better, let's break down the different elements of the tool. As you can see, the diagram has three different elements to it. The effect that sits at the head of the diagram, the categories that make up the diagram, and the sub-causes or bones in the diagram. Let's look at each of these elements a little closer for a better understanding. The head of the fishbone diagram makes visual the symptoms that you are dealing with. This is usually the initial issue that is seen. It may also contain a problem statement, problem to be solved, opportunity, outcome, or the effect of various causes. When you are working with a team, do your best to gain consensus on the effect that you and your team are working on. To find this effect, teams may have brainstorming sessions, pull issues from value stream maps, or see the issue firsthand at the Gemba. Ultimately, the head defines what you and your team will be working on. After you have gained consensus on the symptom and placed it at the head of the fish, now you are ready to move on to the categories. The categories are placed at the edge of each of the bones. One common misconception of the categories is that you must always use the same categories on every fishbone diagram. This is not so. Categories can be as specific to your needs as you would like them to be, or as general as the widely accepted 6Ms. There are two basic ways to categorize, by function or by process. When mapping by function, the fishbone diagrams are typically laid out already. Categories are pre-established, which makes the mapping easy. Two basic types of functional mapping are the manufacturing fishbone and the transactional fishbone. The most common form of manufacturing fishbone is the 6Ms. A transactional fishbone is typically used in office and service settings to map the transactional setting environments. The most common of this transactional fishbone is known as the 6Ps. You can see an example of both the manufacturing and transactional fishbones in your handouts. The other method you can use to get more specific information for your categories is process-based categorization. The most common technique used is the affinity method or the cure methodology. While we won't go into detail of how to affinitize or cure your categories in this course, a high-level overview of how to cure your categories is shown in your handouts. Once your team has established these high-level general categories, it is time to begin establishing sub-causes. Sub-causes are your very first why. They are not the root cause, but they are what begins the digging. Here's a tip. Keep a parking lot somewhere in the room when you reach the sub-cause portion of your fishbone diagram. As you begin to answer the question why, you will find that many of the answers could be countermeasures or even possible solutions. Capture them. Validate people's thoughts. While these possible solutions may be valuable, it is important that you do your due diligence with regards to investigating the effect you and your team are looking at. A simple way to gather sub-causes is to ask why is and insert the symptom at the head of the fish. Remember, a subcause should not be a solution. But if one comes up, put it in your parking lot. Be sure that you dig deep and do not stop at supposed solutions. When documenting subcauses, try to associate them with a measurement. 
This will make it easier to monitor the subcause as you move forward. Now that you're familiar with the elements of a fishbone diagram, let's go and build our own personal fishbone diagrams. We can do this together so that you can use your fishbone diagram in the capstone project at the end of the course. We'll see you in the next lecture.